following the release of the Sign of Life video of Gaza hostage Hirsch Goldberg, Poland. Family members of the remaining 133 captives are stepping up their calls and public pressure, including demonstrations, including right now outside IDF headquarters in Tel Aviv, in order to get the Israeli government and all the negotiating parties to advance quickly to a deal that would see some of those released. Among those uh, uh, joining in these, in these calls is Yotam Kohn, whose brother Nimrod was taken prisoner on October 7th as he was battling on the Gaza border against the Hamas terrorists as a soldier in the armored brigade. And joining us now is Yotam Kohn, brother of Nimrod Kohn, Gaza hostage Nimrod Kohn, speaking to us from the town of Rehova. First of all, Yotam, thank you for joining us. I do believe this is the first time we've had a member of your family on the program. So first, let's just start. Tell us about your brother. Uh, the person he is and what you know about uh, October 7th. Um, Nimrod, my brother, is, is my younger brother. We are three years apart. Um, Nimrod was a soldier in the IDF. He was stationed at the border um, before the 7th of October on the southern part of the Gazan border. Uh, on the morning of the 7th of October, uh, he and his crew members, I heard on radio that there was a bridge on the border near... Uh, to near villages, near Oz and Irim, and they rushed to the border to stop the, the mass of terrorists who were storming um, the, the villages, slaughtering, raping uh, civilians. And on the struggle, he and his teammates were captured. Uh, out of the four of them, uh, they were all taken, but two of them were taken alive, Nimrod included, and two of them were, were, taking, were taken after they were uh, murdered, executed there on the spot. Um, we know from one of the hostages who came back on the first deal that Nimrod, that she said she saw him, and that he's there in the tunnel, uh, relatively healthy. And that's why we're fighting uh, for a deal. We want to see him again as soon as possible. Right. And um, I have to imagine, Yotam, this is an emotional week for your family. The past Pesach holiday, Passover, there were so many hopes going into that. The deal didn't materialize. Now this video came out of Hirsch Goldberg poll and a sign of life of someone who hadn't been heard of for over 200 days, uh, uh, like your brother, even though, as you said, you had this testimony. Just uh, maybe a little talk a little about that, the impact uh, on you and your family of just this past week. Um, first of all, Passover is the Jewish holiday of, of freedom, of liberty, and the fact that we're, ce we're celebrating or, or marking the holiday when 133 hostages are still being held in Gaza just exemplifies the, the, the loss or the, the vacuum that was created on the 7th of October. Um, and, and as you mentioned, seeing the video of, of the hostage who we saw being kidnapped, injured, uh, we all saw the video with him with a lost, uh, and with, without a hand, holding the hand and, and, and uh, being climbing up to to a, a Hamas vehicle, and then this week seeing him alive, but uh, most definitely injured. On the one hand, it's terrible seeing someone like that and hearing his cry and, and the message he, he delivers. And on the other hand, his family and I'm sure many of us were happy to see a sign of life from him. Now, uh... so it's uh, it's it's, uh, it's happiness mixed with sadness. Un totally understandable. And your time, you uh, uh, you alluded to it. Your family, uh, uh, you've been part of the campaign. Uh, your your father, your who do I believe, Vicky, and your mom, Vicky. Your your sister, you have a sister, was a twin sister, correct? Of Nimrod. Have all been outspoken. Your father been quite outspoken after meeting Prime Minister Netanyahu. What is your message uh, this evening, both to the Israeli government and, of course, to all the parties? Involved in negotiating, uh, getting, uh, including to Hamas, and in, in getting the release of your brother and the other hostages. So, a part of the pressure we're putting internationally, and we always keep on doing that, even these days. Uh, we're going abroad and speaking to many politicians and media worldwide. Uh, we think that some pressure should be put on the on the war cabinet, and on the government, and especially the prime minister, to accept a deal. Because as we know, as the day go on, more and more hostages are, are announced dead. And we are afraid that if a deal is not accepted these days, the IDF will go into Rafah, which result in many casualties, including hostages. 
because the, the presence of IDF in Rafah endangers uh, the hostage, the, the proximity endangers them. And we think that more and more hostages will, will die in captivity. And that's why we're calling to the, to, the, to the World Cabinet and to the government to first accept the deal, even if it includes uh, holding up the war or stopping even the war and, and having a ceasefire. And in the future, we can deal with Hamas later, but every hostage who, die, who dies won't come back to life. Right. When you're dead, you're dead, but you, you can still uh, eliminate Hamas in the future. All right. Uh, Yo, Tom Cohn, of course, uh, most of all, we wish you a happy holiday. and We wish you and your family to see the safe return of your brother Nimrod with all his family and all the remaining hostages uh, in Gaza. And we thank you for joining us here on I-24 News.